So I've really been enjoying uh, using HTMX and Tailwind to build websites. Uh, pretty much all my side projects I use uh, HTMX and Tailwind. Uh, mostly because I am mostly think as a back-end developer and HTMX allows me to build reactive UIs without needing to use React and Tailwind allows me to build nice looking UIs without needing to think too hard, especially when I use Tailwind components. And as an example of HTMX, I've built this dummy project where obviously this isn't a full re-render every time, so we're just using HTMX to re-render this bit and then the UI is done using Tailwind UI. So this is pretty much as simple as it can get. But my problem with Tailwind and HTMX SSR stack is that people tend to prefer using Golang for it for some reason and I just really don't enjoy the templating in Golang. So I want to make the case as to why maybe for your next project you should consider using Kotlin uh, paired with HTMX and Tailwind to get a really nice reactive clean UI. But before I get into the demo, I just want to share some things about Kotlin because I know it's not a very common language, um, but there's lots to like about it. So I've got a basic Hello World running. There's three features that I want to show off of Kotlin. The first one is that the string templating by default is very nice. So if I do say that, I can do that and that works just as is. I guess it's kind of like JavaScript, but I don't have to use weird brackets. I don't have to do f sprintf or anything like that. I can even put things there and just make it a bit more complicated. Save this for example. I can make it go to uppercase. So that's feature one, which is not that impressive. But the next feature is a little bit better. Usually when you define a class, um, you define functions inside it like this. Um, which is fine and all, but it's kind of mixing data and functions, which is not great. So Colin has this nice feature where you can uh, declare functions on existing objects like this. To say I want to add a function to square, which returns an integer. And then I can use this uh, to access whatever's here. And these are called extension functions. So I can add it to my custom classes or I can add it to existing classes. Um, so what I can do here is I could do two dot square, uh, square. and this will print four. Um, the second feature I want to show are trailing lambdas. So usually you can create a function print four, and this is super common in many languages. I'll just add a prefix to make it obvious, and then I want to make it take a function. Um, which returns a string and cool and what I'll do is I'll print the prefix and then the result of the function uh, and that's all fine but what Kotlin lets you do is when you have this at the end it lets you do this cool syntax where instead of doing it how you normally would and doing it in here, I'll say you do that in here, which is a function that returns um, one, whatever. What I can do is move it out. So now this is out here. And I can also just omit the return. This is valuable because when you mix both the extension functions and the trailing lambdas, you can do some really cool system where you basically build your own domain specific language. So I have an example here, which is Vocator, which is the standard web server for Kotlin. Pretty much does this. So you have an application.module, which is an extension function that you use. And then inside this, you have some of these that let you define the routes just like this which is super useful and super clean, but it's not magic either. Like I know how these works. I can write these and at work we often do. We write um, for testing, uh, we write our custom little DSLs so that we can set up the scenarios exactly how we want in unit tests um, in a declarative way. And that's basically what this does. It lets you create declarative code inside an imperative language, which is super useful in for this for example where this isn't 
very imperative. I'm just trying to define routes for each of these. But where this gets taken one step further is that now you don't have to use XML to write HTML. You can use this thing with types checking and autocomplete and all the variables like I'm here is this is my HTML but I can just define a variable or everything and my classes are just sets it makes HTML not XML which is so nice um, because even React JSX is still XML I don't want to be writing XML I don't want to be touching magic I, I want to use just the core mechanics of the language in order to create something that uh, renders how I want. So here's an example of the dashboard. Uh, as you can see, I'm just creating these. Um, and then adding text, it looks a bit daunting at first, but it's so much easier to abstract because I can take it one step further and here I've created my own extension function, which means that I can basically create my own HTML components inside of this system. And I can pass parameters in here if I want to. Uh, and I do later. So this is all the headers. And then here for the index, I pass in here. And then I use the dashboard here. And I just pass it in like a normal HTML component because I created just like these were. Um, and I can copy this if I want to. I can do the exact same thing, uh, which is super powerful. And then here, this one's a bit more complicated. So the nav bar, I pass it all the tabs that I want. And then I, here I can just do a for each and map these to get the component and render what I want. And this is a super powerful way to use HTMX and Tailwind um, because the templating is really nice and the templating is just for language. I don't have to add any weird dependencies. I don't have to cross compile. I don't have to do some string templating thing. I can, I, I can move these to another file if I want or I can leave them in this one, uh, I can override these. Uh, I can create my own ones. I can say I want to use, create enums for Tailwind classes or create abstractions and basically create a normal CSS file using Tailwind classes. I can do all that because it's just the language without any extra stuff. Uh, and that's what makes this my preferred way of doing things like that.